Jordan. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kayla. Hi, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Anne. Hi, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! <laughs> hey everyone, happy Wednesday. We are here with the amazing fairy crew. <laughs> And we have a fun show planned for you today. This is our live hang with our BFFs, but these gals have been scurrying around all day, and you've been working on some pretty delicious stuff. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So somebody <laughs> tell us what you've been making up. I just finished up NZ Goodies, and I'm starting on a, a specialty designer pack, the Fire Mountain. Oh, Ooh, very cool. Fun, fun, fun. I've been working on a few MC1 Studio packs today, <laughs> which have... It's been pretty fun. Oh. <laughs> and I get to put together some Tussa goodies. <laughs> and I say you just opened a big batch of fresh bamboo. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What about you, Anne? I have been, I've got to speak speak on the phone because <laughs> I can't Words. speak in sentences, apparently. <laughs> Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> we are so glad that you are here. This is our live weekly hang, and today we're just going to do a little Felton chat. But before we jump into that, we're going to say hi to just a few people, and the fairies have lined up some really fun stuff to show you. So let's do a quick check in, and we're going to get started. Thank you for being here, everyone. We are Living Felt, based in Texas. We're here in Central Texas, just outside of Austin, in a cute little town called Dripping Springs. Some of y'all know we moved just the end of last month, about two and a half miles west <laughs> from where we were in Austin. We're still getting settled into our new digs, and uh, this is what we like to do on Wednesdays, is hang out with our friends. So if you're brand new, say hi and where you're from. I'm gonna say a quick hi to a few people. Who do we got, Anne? We have got Rose and Wendy in Connecticut, Judy in Tennessee, Kelsey Hi, Judy. Hi, Rose, Wednesday. Hi, Judy. Y'all, thank you so much for being here. Let me tell you a little bit about how the live show goes. It is interactive, so if you're watching live right now, hit that bell up in the corner and get notified every time we go live. If you are watching the YouTube playback, be sure you hit the subscribe button so you find out every time we upload a new video. We do our live show, we very often do felting tutorials, we do show and tells, we have amazing guests. Sometimes we show you what you want to see in the shop and we like to show you what we're working with as well. We're going to be felting today doing a little tutorial for our no problema and I'll be showing you that and how you can make your own. We have included a download link so if you want to felt along with us or uh, there's a link so you can download a PDF. PDF. It'll show you the drawing and the supplies that we're working with today. And otherwise, maybe you just want to felt along or chit chat and felt on what you're working on. But what? just say hi and where you're from. And the first up is going to be Hannah. She's got something fun to show you. Hey, everybody. How are y'all doing? So today I'm going to show off our MC1 goodie pack, which is a fun little assortment of our MC1 batting. So the goodie pack is going to come with 12 colors. It's going to be a quarter ounce of each color. So this goodie pack, it does vary from round to round. Every round is going to be a little bit different, but we try to include a variety of every uh, color family that we have. So this one right now is going to be red grapefruit, bonsai, red indigo. This is buttercup, willow, fern, uh, pumpkin spice, powder pink, blue frost, and of course you've got the white and the black. And then this lovely color at the end is going to be blue azul. So that's a fun little goodie pack. It's, do it's great for the project we're working on today because 2D takes such a small amount of fiber. So it's nice to get the wide variety and you can do all kinds of fun stuff with it. Thank y'all. Nice, nice, nice. Oh. Lori Honey McComey says, love goodies. <laughs> oh, cool. Thank you for that link. And Dana Fleshy says, goodie pack. Uh, Rosie says, I love these packs. <laughs> Hello again, everybody. And I'm showing off some of our awesome Earth Harmony foam today. It's our signature foam. As you can see here, it's, it's pretty dense. It's about an inch and a half thick. It's perfect for 3D felting and 2D as well. This is a 12 by 12 foam right here. 
and it's it works it fits uh, our felt sheets great on here as well as some smaller 3d projects but we also have foam in larger and smaller sizes this one i've got down here is a 24 by 18 foam and it's about the same thickness but this is for big projects where you can have all of your <laughs> all of your supplies needed on this big workspace right here. Wonderful. Devin yeah. says... Wait. <laughs> 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 that foam is the best. It, it's awesome. Gen yeah, Jennifer McMullen says, I love my foam. You need this. <laughs> yeah. Jennifer says it's awesome. Uh, Kimberly loves it, the, the foam. Yep, good. And it's nice and firm. Well, cool. perfect Thank to go you. along with those foams is our 100% wool felt sheets. We got inspired by the Pantone 2019 spring and summer collections and then kind of tweaked it from there. But we've got some really cool colors up here today. And we've got, there's the back view. So just to run through these, we've got chocolate, Bordeaux, Marina, Leaf, Dijon, and Deep Red. And I really love the colors that you guys picked out for that. I there. don't know how y'all came across that, but those colors look really smashing together. They are. Like They're just so warm. You living room and... in those colors. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, if you had all those toss pillows mm -hmm. in that color on a couch. Or paint my walls that yeah. color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Karen Folio says, I love the colors. And Cherie says, loving the parade of goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, these, these guys are one millimeter thick. They are approximately eight by 11. Perfect for um, some awesome ranges of project products I uh, or projects I get so inspired by some of our colors and love to put them together but these guys are $2.95 a piece and if you buy 10 or more they'd go down to $2.75 a piece oh that's cool and I, I think it was Luna who asked let me see who asked are they in a pack who is it somebody says uh, oh no it was Vicky Vicky Bedane says are those in a pack or are they separate they are separate. We don't have these in a pack currently, but some of our kits might come with a uh, white felt sheet or maybe our Robin kit actually comes with an apricot and a, a light blue felt sheet. Right, so maybe we, maybe what we'll do is a little bundle for people who are watching the show today. Maybe we ah. could just make a little yeah. suggested color bundle. And if you get those, just give us a day or so to get that up and we'll make it a little bundle so you can just click if you like all the colors that you saw on the show today. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for your patience as we've gotten settled into our new space. We have some very fun things to show you today. We have been hard at work processing and, and dyeing and all that goodness, and we have some gorgeous things to show you today. This right here. <laughs> is our autumn ember dyed lock assortment how gorgeous are these colors <laughs> we have just been ah uh, we felt it was just love at first sight for us with this with this assortment so this is autumn embers it's not on the site yet but it will be just give us to the end of the day and it'll be up there available to purchase sold in one ounce increments so this is the first <laughs> announcement that we have and we have a second one as well paula lot says there's our Anne, and oh, linda reader oh. says woo <laughs> kimberly Pulley says locks woo -hoo. they're very happy about oh yes. uh, let's see who said i need that whole basket of locks mm -hmm. <laughs> wendy taylor says omg my eyes just went nuts love <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah and then here is oh oh go ahead oh, let them fall <laughs> here's the this is our wild vine colorway of, of dyed sheep's locks now each of these are going to have multiple breeds of sheep in there so you'll get a lot of fun texture these are on actually on the site right now <laughs> So Jennifer McMullen says, those are beautiful. Want to dive into that basket. Oh my goodness. Sorry, yes. Butler says, could eat those luscious colors. Yay. Uh, <laughs> We're glad that you're loving them as much as we are. And oh, just you can see uh, kind of what one ounce looks like. 
One, one ounce is, is kind of a, a heaping handful. This is about what one ounce looks like. And uh, as you can see, we get a lot of variegation in there. Mm -hmm. So let's see what people are saying. Um, Sarah Longworth says, oh, those greens are awesome. I'll be ordering those to use in my terrariums. Oh, Perfect. that's fun. Um, Christina Iodize, I saw her say she loves those colors mm -hmm. and um, love the greens too. Uh, Connie said she was just thinking she needed some green locks for her pumpkins oh, yesterday. Perfect. Yeah. Um, someone said they wished the um, PDF link was clickable or worked. That should be clickable. So we'll uh, we'll check that out and try and repost it as we go live here so y'all can download it. And it will be on our website. Uh, drooling is Lori. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. So beautiful. I need to move to the U.S. Says Kate Ellis. <laughs> oh my goodness. Come on down. <laughs> yes. We have room. We have room. <laughs> Thank you, Anne, so much. Well, that was fun, right? It's been a while since uh, all the fairies came up and mostly it's just about us um, kind of getting settled, like Anne said, and in our new space. There has been so much to do and there remains to be so, but we're having a lot, a lot of fun with it. And my new sink room, which was, you know, something I just had to have. I'm trying to cue myself up here so I can see y'all. Um, my new sink room is just amazing. I love the sink I bought. I love, some of you know, I use um, Beyond Clean to wash our locks. These are all sourced directly by me. I work directly with the farmers, so that's why we call it direct trade. So there's no one in the middle. Uh, they're all, these are all from US Farms. I'm bringing in some even more wonderful uh, locks. And as some of y'all might have seen that yesterday, I went to an Angora goat ranch with my husband, one of my favorite ranchers. And um, I brought in a few things I'll show you when we turn down at least, but I brought in just a few of the locks a lot of colored locks mohair locks so they mohair doesn't have scales like wool uh, so it doesn't technically felt but it'll mat up pretty good and um, they're natural colored so this batch that we got is in the range of reds and blondes and I think I even uh, picked out some grays in there so we, we expect to have a variety of locks to share with you this year and in a wonderful range of colors oh Okay, yes. Are our locks dyed with natural dyes? No, no, we use acid dyes. So acid dyes are, um, they bind to the fiber, and for the acid, you just use white vinegar. So it's like your standard household vinegar, uh, about a 5% vinegar, and it all the dye binds to the fiber. So there's no um, dye released into the environment, and that's the same with our MC1 batting. It's dyed here in the U.S. It's an all-in-one process, so there's no environmental waste in the form of chemicals or dyes um, so they're not uh, they're not natural dyes like walnuts and you know onion and things like that you expect we use the jacquard acid dyes to make our to dye our locks yeah cool well so do you guys want to felt together a little bit work on a little project I am going to pull in my table here and show you what we're working on today and we're just for the people who are brand brand new we're going to bust through some of the basic uh, steps if you want to do a 2D picture and we'll turn down and I'll tell you a little bit about mine and we're just going to get started. So thanks for being here everyone. Okay and my cameraman. We are, let's see I think I need to get myself adjusted. That was probably part of it. You know, and we're gonna, while we're just getting set up here, let me just tell you, we're gonna look at that, uh, that link that we included for you. Uh, the link we included for you was a uh, short link and it should, be, it should be downloadable. I hope it is. And if it's behind a wall and you can't, you can't access it with that direct link, uh, actually, I think Ann will, Ann will test it out for us. So I'm just gonna move ahead and Anne's gonna test that out for us and see if we can, the link is working? Okay, great, the link is working. Okay, so here's what we're gonna needle felt today. I'm just calling it the no problema. Um, some of y'all know we've spent the last nine months planning, buying, uh, <laughs> planning and building out our brand new retail space here in Texas. And um, I found that I was so 
kind of like overloaded with regular work and then with the construction and planning work and stress that there were so many nights I just couldn't do anything. I couldn't make anything. And um, plus I was keeping it all a secret. Maybe that was part of it. <laughs> but I thought, what do you do when you're kind of in a creative slump or maybe you're feeling like, you know, the juices just aren't flowing. And I've been working on a few fun projects over the last few weeks and months that we'll be sharing over time. But one of them is this little no problema. Sometimes what I need is like a greeting card or a simple gift for somebody and I find that I don't really have it. So I thought what if we were to make something really fun and simple together that you could do even if you weren't feeling overly inspired and you would have something that you could gift when that time comes up. And that's how I came up with this little no problema. So here's the picture of this guy and um, the live people. I know you're seeing it upside down and we're going to try and flip it around on the on the uh, playback for YouTube. But this is my little llama picture just sketched out in pencil. And then I made a photocopy of him. And what we did was we traced it with this uh, iron on transfer pen. We sell this in the shop and this is a uh, I think I linked to it. Yeah, it's linked on the PDF. The iron-on transfer pen is magic because you can take any image and trace right over it and have an ironable impression. Is that the right word? Ironable impression. So this one has already been traced over for me by one of the magic fairies. And I'm just going to retrace over a couple of lines so that you can kind of get the idea. I'll put a couple of like little swoops in his tail and maybe I'll just blacken the hooves. It doesn't, they don't really have hooves, so that's funny. The toes. Uh, I'll just blacken those a little bit and I'll add the eye. So you can see that all of this is going to be ironed onto material. What you're going to do is take any image and trace over it and you can then use an iron and iron that onto fabric. Now today I chose to use a felt sheet uh, because it's so easy to needle felt on. You could try denim, you could try linen, you can try just about anything that you already like to needle felt on. So this is blank and we're going to take an iron and make this impression or the lines onto this piece. Am I okay, Anne? Do I need to move? Okay, I'm doing all right. All right, so now my iron is a uh, safety iron, so it's already kind of turned itself off. I'm going to turn it upside down for a second here and let it let it wake up. Whoops! <laughs> you know, I'm going to put this down so I have a little something to press into. Okay, I've been talking already for a while. While we're waiting for my iron to heat up, is there anything to chat about? Oh, the iron-on transfer pen is getting a lot of love. Now, okay. you, yeah, that's cool. You don't have to use an iron-on transfer pen, and I'm gonna show you two other ways. I got the image onto my felt, and we're gonna actually add to this drawing on the felt as well. Um, I'm just heating up my iron is all. Okay, here we go. So my iron is just starting to heat up. You can see I'm still using the felt, same felt sheet with no image on there. All we do is trace directly over an image, and then of course you're gonna get the reverse. So you're just gonna hold the iron in one place for about 20 seconds. We do have this on our YouTube channel under our Needle Felting a Realistic Pet Portrait. We show you how to use this. And the thing about it is when the image is starting to come through, you or it, when you know the image is transferring, when you can see it kind of bleeding through the back of your drawing. So that looks pretty good. Before you lift up your paper and peek, just go ahead and, you know, go over any spots where you want it to be a little better. And you can get a couple of impressions per. So there we go. You can get a couple of impressions from this same tracing that you did. Can you make a 2D picture on fa fabric other than felt? Like, could you use linen or something? Yes, like yes. And I meant to bring a little house that I did, but we've done some together on linen. So you could do linen. Uh, you could try denim uh, fabric. You Canvases can be kind of hard sometimes, but you absolutely can. So here's what we're going to work with today. I have, this is my coloring box. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see that. I'll bring it in a little bit. This is my coloring box that I have at home. And when I have 
pulled out stuff for a project and it feels a little too small to tuck back into its parent box, which is all grouped by color, I'm just shoving it in here. If it's super tiny, then I've started carting it into little trash bats. Trash bats? Goodie bats. <laughs> candy, candy bats. <laughs> exactly. Here's my big piece of foam. Here's my no problema. And here's what I wanted to suggest. Oh, I meant to bring that. Um, I'll show y'all something else. I meant to bring uh, one of our white ink pens. Don't you have the little tiny ones, the jelly pens? I don't know, huh? Oh, this is the iron-on transfer pen. Here's what I have. I never really drew on felt with a regular pen before, but this is, uh, this is actually the same pen that my husband uses, Uniball, and they're like 0.7, uh, 0.7 Uniball. These are the pens that he uses. Like, you know, some people have a pen they like to write with, and it's also the one that Danny likes to use on hers. So here's the fun thing with this llama. I'm gonna do a saddle blanket on mine, but we're giving you a blank llama so that you can kind of decorate them how you want. And I'm going to give mine a little saddle blanket. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw right on him. And don't worry about it not being perfect. Okay, just like give him some decoration any way you feel inspired, even if you change it after you work on him a little bit. Can everybody see? I'm just drawing. This uniball draws right on here so well. And I'm just putting a little bit of a line and giving myself a little bit of room to play. And I, maybe I'll even want to give him, maybe I want to even give him a little bit of like a headdress. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to kind of color our llama together. And then he can be cut out and used for like a magnet or a greeting card or whatever you like. Doing okay? Cool. Yes. Okay. So the colors I'm working with on my guy are, i just drop him, are um, I'm going to use some evergreen. This is ocean green. And I think I have magenta in here somewhere pomegranate. I call it magenta. <laughs> I just make up my own names for our colors. Uh, pomegranate and coral reef. So these bats come in two ounce increments, which many of you are familiar with and you've seen before. Oh, and cotton white. Um, we also have goodie bags like Hannah showed you. We have studio packs like, um, who, was, who was working on studio packs today? Uh, both Kayla and Jordan. Kayla and Jordan, yeah. yeah. Um, and then this is what a two ounce roll looks like right here. This is how we traditionally sell it in a two ounce roll per color or you can get a goodie bag or a, or a studio pack. So this is what a two ounce roll looks like. It unfurls to about 10 inches by 20 inches, approximately. It's a nice big clump of a color. So all we're gonna do is, start, I, what I did with mine is I started filling in the saddle blanket. So I thought, I'm just gonna start to felt and let y'all ask some questions. We're gonna start decorating our little guy and um, y'all interrupt me with questions and let's just talk a little bit about, I'm interested to see also, what do you do if you feel that you're in a creative slump? What do you like to make? I'm working with our 42 triangle and I just like to put a glob down there that uh, bigger than I need about and then just guide the fibers in to where they need to go. Jill asks, is Firestar the same as Angelina? Firestar is different from Angelina and we used to carry Firestar and I don't remember what's all in it but Angelina is a polyester fabric and Firestar I think is a blend of fibers so a little off topic uh, from this for those of you who don't know, but it's like a blingy non wool product. In preparation for this, I was interested to learn that uh, llamas are pretty stubborn creatures, and that if they, while they can carry up to 100 pounds, uh -huh. um, if they feel their load is too heavy, they will refuse to take a step until you lighten it. Really? Yeah. Just 100? Is that all they can carry? 100 pounds. Wow. They'll carry that up to 10 to 12 miles. They'll just refuse. 
So when we were at the Angora Ranch yesterday, there was this really pretty llama. I think we included it on the little video clip Rodney made. And um, I thought it would be fun. I've wanted to do a fantasy llama 3D, but I think I was thinking of a couple of llama projects like this one, a little 2D, and then maybe a resting llama to for people who like want to get a toe in the water with armature, but we can avoid the legs and then go for like a standing llama. Like and that'd be fun. But, um, you know, your llama could be realistic or not realistic. It could be pink, it could be blue, it could be any color you want. Now for those, I hope, I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. This is MC1 batting. It's a short staple. It's really easy to guide into place. It'll go where you want it. You can needle felt it nice and flat. And yeah, and you can blend colors too, which we did last week, but today I'm just gonna put them in just how they come. And can you start on on your llama? Um, could you start with the coat of the alpaca? Or? Yeah, yeah, you could start it all white. I just felt like for me, um, sometimes I like to eat my dessert first. <laughs> <laughs> and so it seemed like when I started on mine, and I, I'm going to fit felt on this little saddle blanket for a little bit, and then depending on timing, I might jump to the one I've already I've already started. Um, sometimes I like to you know start with the dessert first, and this way I could fill in the design and not worry about covering the whole thing in the coat color, and then come back and putting this on top. I kind of wanted them to be the same level, um, but you could even color the whole thing in and then come back and add the topping. It doesn't really matter. And notice if you're brand brand new that I'm not driving deep into the foam. I'm using a 42 triangle, which is very fine. It also, is, we color code ours yellow. Uh, it has a really nice surface attack, so you can just go in using the first couple of barbs. And that's a real nice thing about it, because it'll just tack that wool down for you real easily. Karen says, if I'm in a creative slump, doing an abstract really helps. Oh, that's neat. And so, Karen, are you doing a needle felt abstract or a wet felted abstract? And like what kind of... Kate yeah. likes to make mandalas. Oh, I, you know, I thought of that too when I was working on this little saddle blanket. I thought a mandala would be a really nice project to do. Yeah, that's a great idea. Sherry likes to wet felt flowers with uh, silk hankies and silk and bamboo for a very fast and easy project. Oh, that seems like a nice idea. Wet felting, yeah, wet felting flowers. And we've wet felted some flowers together over the last couple of years on our live show too, I agree. I'm making this one a little different from my other one, although I'm using similar colors. Just so y'all can get an idea like how easy and fast it can be to get a project going. When you make 2D pictures, do you peel the, the background off the foam? Periodically, no. What I found is one, if I'm if I'm doing something like this and I'm just applying a very thin layer of fiber, um, I'm gonna leave it in place until I'm done. So as long as you're not driving the wool into the foam, if you have a finer needle that's also your you're putting less fiber all the way through to the foam and entangling it into the foam. But if you leave it flat, then your picture doesn't warp. So if you peel this up right now, it's not gonna lay just as flat. And it's just a little bit cleaner if you keep it laying flat. Now you can kind of basically draft your colors in like I'm doing now and then go back and just flatten it all out later. But you don't have to overly shape things before you put them down, especially with the MC1. Anything that's fuzzy, uh, and this is a pretty low fuzzy wool, but anything that's fuzzy, just guide it back into the main body uh, or main area of that color. Otherwise, you can just kind of guide it where you want it, which is pretty fun. Living felt videos and tutorials when she's in a creative slump. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> that's really sweet. I know that sometimes I, I uh, for me, needle felting is just therapeutic. It's like a way to unwind, it, it, you know, after working. And I find that I feel a little 
a, a, like a little sadness if I don't have something to make. Like I would rather sit and make something than sit and do nothing, you know, sit and watch anything. I'd rather sit and make something. Mm -hmm. So the fun thing is with this little project is you could just go off with a saddle blanket. In fact, I'm gonna do another one that's more like, more like he's wearing a poncho, you know, rather than just a saddle blanket. So the design comes across his body like that. I'm gonna do evergreen, here's evergreen. Um, so llamas, llamas, I guess they found that like females turn out to be kind of the better guard llamas. Mm -hmm. ah. Interesting that, um, but the, there is, the, and apparently not all, so they have a llama at the, the Angora Ranch where I was, and a lot of uh, shepherds use llamas to guard against predators like coyotes and such like that. Um, I guess not all llamas are good guards as it turns out. But they have found like there is really a marked drop in loss from pet predators when somebody has a llama. Like a big drop. Awesome. Like I think the study that I read was like 20 from 21% loss to 7% loss and in some cases 0% loss by adding a llama. Uh-huh. Isn't that interesting? From coyotes especially. I guess it's more common where um, coyotes are present. So more like the western U.S. and maybe the southern too because out here we definitely have coyotes. Mm -hmm. Now llamas don't really have wool. Some people will call it wool, but it's really... Um, well, once it's shorn, it's considered fleece, but on them, you know, it might be called fiber, but it's more like a double layer. Uh, it's like a double layer, so it has the undercoat and it has the outer coat. So the undercoat is like nicer to spin. Um, and the outer coat or like the guard hairs are like when if you've ever had like a sweater, uh, a sweater that's made from llama, you might notice more the hair, the uh -huh. hair element. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. A couple of people have shared that even just listening to somebody, you know, felt is therapeutic. <laughs> okay. So I'm just filling in and, um, you know, I encourage you if you just want to play with something or if you're feeling like you're in a little creative slump, go ahead and download uh, this PDF. It's free. After the live show, we'll probably put it in our shopping cart. Uh, we'll probably make a little bundle too for people who want to download it and uh, play, make it a little kit for you to play with. Now mine is lumpy and bumpy right here. So you can switch to a coarser needle. This is a 38 star and tack it down. But I am more likely to just poke, poke, poke with my 42 triangle because it leaves so little of a mark. And if you want to learn how to make something really smooth, I encourage you to work on a little 2D project and just practice your patience, you know, and your interest to focus on small areas and get things flat. If you're working with longer fibers like a New Zealand Corydale, you know, the staple length is longer or Merino, that may seem a little more challenging because your needle felting and your needle wants to go between the fibers. Whereas the MC1 batting is all kind of mangled up together and is a nice batting. So it's a little bit easier with our MC1 batting to get a nice smooth finish on a needle felt. But what I will do is sit down and just get really, uh, you know, detailed with this. But what I want to do is jump to one that I was uh, working on last night. Uh, before I do, I'm going to show you uh, how to put some lines in here. Let's use this because it'll show up. Um, I'm just going to take a bit of the, I'll, I'll use green, I'm just going to do this real fast. I'm just going to take a bit of the MC1 in this color and I'm just going to stretch it out to a real fine little point. I'm going to make a little zigzag or triangular pattern here and I'm just going to start it so you can see what I do. I'm going to try to zoom in. Okay, Anne's going to zoom in a little. So all I'm going to do is anchor it at one point pull it so that it doesn't come apart and anchor it at the second point. If you have a hard time grabbing onto it, well then grab your grab a coarser needle and then hold that needle in place where you just take the fiber up to a different point. Just hit the points, hit point, point, and then you can go back and hit the middle. 
Don't pull it too tight so that it doesn't have any room to go in. If you pull it too tight, then as you go to anchor the middle, it'll just pull out. But that's all you have to do is just kind of stretch it out, needle the points. And again, don't pull it so taut that you uh, lose, lose the anchoring when you poke it in. So just practice with that a little bit to, to get some nice lines on yours, drag it across. You could also, you, you could use this for outlines as well in anything you want to outline. MC1 is pretty much that easy. You don't need long straight fibers to get long straight lines. Just like that. Cool. And give me the thumbs up. So now I am going to do the magic peel even though later I'll wish it were flat again, but that's not a big deal. And um, I'm going to jump over to the one I was working on last night, which is not quite as dark. Um, and because I drew this one, this is the one I drew freehand, and then I made the drawing for all of you um, so that you could download it. And this one I just used my jelly pen. You can barely see it probably, but can you see that white on there? Yeah, it I drew one there. really, really well. I think it was last year or the year before we did a little needle felted snowman on black and the question was how do you get you know how do you do your outlines on a darker felt and we just used our jelly pen so that worked for us but this is the one I was working on last night this is my no problema and um, just my little therapy llama maybe it's a therapy llama <laughs> can it come into the grocery store with me if it's my therapy llama can it come on the plane if it's my, ther <laughs> my therapy llama yeah, let's test it <laughs> we're gonna test her out okay so i just have a little cotton white here and all i'm doing is just going and filling in the body um, and I'm not even focused yet on making it really dense at all. So when I'm filling in a bigger area, I'm going to kind of do the same thing. And that is I let the fiber stick out of where I want it and then I'll tuck it back. So if you're trying to avoid lines, notice what I just had. I lift the end loose like this. I left the end loose. And then if you just lay it on and uh, the MC1 batting, lay it on and just let it kind of feather into the rest of the project, the needle felt that direction sort of going the way you want it to blend. Try not to needle felt against it because you'll sort of push and create a little bit of a line. Where do I go? The phone? Perfect. Good? Perfect. Okay, better. Sorry, y'all. All right. So... You can either go along the line and fold the fiber back in or just go here. I think with this one, I'm gonna make something out of this after it's done. So this is all I do to fill in the parts. And why don't, if y'all have any questions or anything to contribute to the conversation, I'll be quiet for a minute. I believe it was Vicki who shared that she went and saw a fox walk up to and as soon as he saw her donkeys and llama and just turned around and walked away. Oh, how cute. I actually saw a fox today when I was walking Speedy. Mm -hmm. In the woods just right out, right out adjacent to our property here. So cute. That's really sweet. And I'm just going to bend that around. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to know any other projects too that y'all like to do when you're feeling like you're in a creative slump. Because sometimes just the act of still creating keeps you from perpetuating that slump. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like that blank page syndrome when, and it's kind of hard to get going again. It's like when you haven't worked out in six months and then it's seven and then it's eight yeah. <laughs> and then it's nine. Now I put this black in here earlier just to guide myself. You don't have to do that at all. I'm gonna start in this case kind of in the foot and cluster that wool down there. And you can always make take multiple passes in a particular area. You know, go back, go back to it again, go back to it again. You don't have to hit it all in one. I think, you know, when you're doing 2D, it would be better to not put too much in. Put in what you need or a little less and then gauge that amount. Vicki asks, will you outline the llama? That's a really good question. You know what? I was really inspired by Kayla's pickle last week. <laughs> Kayla shared, now I know it didn't show on the YouTube, so I'm really sorry about that. Apparently we were holding it up to the live camera and not the YouTube camera. Um, but what I liked about it was she used uh, a very um, dark, comparatively, color of felt behind it, and that created an outline. 
and I thought that looked really nice. And so I was thinking I might cut out a llama that's just a little bit bigger and glue this to that or do like an iron on make it like an iron on and fuse Ooh. the two together it just depends on what you want to do with this like you could line it with wool or you could line it with yarn you know you could mount it onto metal you could make it a magnet you could make it just a greeting card you could turn it into something to hang in your car and swing from the rearview mirror this might be big but not if you drive a durango yeah. <laughs> if you drive my little car, it might be too big, but if you drive an RV, maybe it's not too big. Maybe it's a window thing. Maybe it's a, you know, I don't know. I, I, but I was thinking to do the felt uh, on the back like Kayla's pickle because I thought it was just so darn cute. Kimberly shares that she likes to go back to a project that she feels she failed at or, or, um, or sometimes find something find something else interesting to work on when reviewing old work. Oh, that seems like a really nice idea. I really do. Mm -hmm. That's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. oh, Jennifer shares, I am getting inspired. Thank you, Marie <laughs> Well, you know, guys, I think we all kind of go through some similar things. Like sometimes we just don't even know what to make. And it's not that it's not that we're not creative. Sometimes we just have so much going on in our life that it's kind of taking up all of our free space, if you will. And it's hard to um, maybe just chill out, you know, just relax a little bit enough to let all your guard down. Um, just to be open to some inspiration and I thought I really know that that was that happened to me this last year quite a bit and I can it reminded me of when I was in a stressful job now it wasn't stressful in a negative way but it was really 100% occupying the build out was and I thought I'm not alone in this for sure and it would just be great if we share some ideas on what you what you might make like I like the mandala project and I've thought about us making some mandalas before um, to share, you know, as templates because that would be a fun thing to do. It's just so free. You can go any direction with it. Yeah. Karen asks, should you put a backing on it if you're making a card or a magnet? Um, it, I think it really depends. So if you're making a magnet, what you want is to decide how stiff you need this to be. So if you're making a card and this doesn't have to be removable, you could glue this right onto the card. You could cut it out and glue it right onto the card. If you want it to be stiff itself, uh, you could put a backing on it. And so let me ask a question. I was thinking about having us all come back next week with maybe a simple 2D project that you needle felted and look at a couple of things we could make with them after and how we might make them. So let's just do a survey on that. Would you be interested in a follow-up of things we could do and how we might convert our two little 2D artworks into other things, whether they're gifts or um, if that interests you or would you like to do a new project? So that's what I'll ask you. Do we look at what to do with our 2D artwork or do we work on a new project? I think I'm gonna give him, make his tail a little different color. Aww. Maybe, something. Maybe he dyed it blue for the party. <laughs> yeah, so y'all give us feedback and we're on somewhere between a 25 and 30 second delay from everything you say. So if you've written something during the show that you asked a question or you made a comment and we didn't get to it, really what happens is our time goes by faster and we have a difficult time seeing those comments. So if it's... Um, if it's really important and we don't get to it, feel free to log on to our, go to our website and click the contact us link at the bottom. We have what's called a little CRM system and that allows us to have an ongoing communication with you that's a little more um, trackable than an email. And you can also call us. We're open Monday through Friday from 10 to four and I mean nine to four and Saturdays from 10 to four. So you can call us. We'll be glad to help you if you're trying to match colors for a project. You don't know how to get started on a project. Um, sometimes people are teaching classes, which I know I have someone to uh, respond to about that. And they want to know, you know, they need help with making decisions. We're so happy to do that. And I think I'm going to jump off. Uh, let's see. What was I going to do with this guy? I guess I'll just... Um, 
do his do give him an eye or something. Yes, everyone is super super down for. Oh, okay. So you want to? Okay. So what we'll do is, uh, yeah, we'll come back next week. So here's what I want to challenge you with this week. Make yourself a no problema, make yourself a rainbow, make yourself a flower, make yourself a pig or a pickle, you know, whatever you're inspired to make, make a couple of little 2D projects that are either for yourself or you might like to use as gifts. I would love to see some just suggestions from you all in the group of things you wanna see them converted into. For me, I see a magnet, uh, a magnet or a greeting card as some of the most you know common things it could even become like an iron-on patch uh, for a, a backpack or you know it could be something small for a pair of jeans or something like that so I'd love to see your ideas of what you want to see I'm gonna bring back some things that we've used in the past I'm having a deja vu right now I'm gonna bring back some things that we've used in the past uh, and show you how you might work with those just for people who miss those just for the moment I'm gonna give them a little a little nose and a smile just kind of get us a little further and I'm gonna clean my guy up too I'll have him all finished for next time this is my no problema and I'm gonna do my best to remember this the next time I'm feeling a little like on a little bit of a creative slump that I could work on an abstract, like someone suggested, revisit an old project, um, work maybe make a mandala, maybe what felt the flower, someone said. Uh, oh. said maybe make an ornament. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, good idea. I love the ornament idea. Okay, ornament, I like that. So I'll think about what is it, what would it have to be to be an ornament? And I made mine a little bit bigger so we could see them. You could certainly make them smaller. Now, alpaca have banana-shaped ears. Oh, by the way, in case you didn't know, I mean llama have alpaca-shaped ears. Uh-huh. I'll give my guy a couple of ears. And I'm going to make mine nice and thick. Now, if you make yours, go back, needle felt it super smooth. Don't leave any bare spots. You know, make it chunky if you want it chunky. Mine I'm going to make pretty smooth probably. And we're going to come back next week. We will look at um, different ways you can convert your little 2D felts into something worth gifting. So we'll say we're going to go beyond the beyond just making an embroidery hoop, which, you know, we've seen a lot lately. I think was birthed a lot from people stitching and stuff, which is super fun and cute. But we'll come up with some other ideas. I better give my guy a tail. Yes, final things, final thoughts. See, I'm missing Chantel, a link. Uh, said she'd like some info on how to make it into a patch that could be show, sewed onto like a backpack or something. Okay, sewable patch. An iron, we'll do a sewable patch. We'll look at an iron-on patch. Um, sewable patch, iron-on patch, ornament, love that idea. Greeting card. We're gonna come up with some fun solutions. So I here's what I'm hoping to see is in our group, which is called, it's right here on Facebook, it's called Living Felt Friends, that over the next week, you will tag us with tag, uh, should we call it felt no problema? Felt no, felt no problema. No dashes required, felt no problema. And share us, share with us, what 2D you're making. It doesn't have to be a llama. Like I said, it could be a rainbow. It could be a house. It could be anything. And we're going to take some of our 2D creations and turn them into something fun. Yay. Yay. No problema. <laughs> Do we like him? <laughs> oh, we love him. <laughs> uh, won't a sewable patch shrink in the wash? Yeah, but maybe you're not washing your backpack. <laughs> uh, use this like for sweaters and stuff for Christmas. I love it. Hey guys, here's what we're going to do. Thank you for felting this llama with us today or whatever you felted. We hope that you'll download it and make one too. And we are going to turn up and wrap up. I have one more teaser for you for an upcoming project. Thank you guys so much think. for joining us. And uh, here's, I want to show you just a quick teaser. I just want to see if this project is even of interest to you. Um, it's a project that I was inspired by a painter and came up with this funky way of um, felting a little scene. So if this is of interest to you, then we can do it in a few weeks. And we have some other fun projects lined up for you. 
Um, one is uh, one of them is actually a felt along that is gifted to us from Peta Korb, who came here from Australia a few weeks ago for Kiyoshi's class. So um, she basically made something up in her hotel room and then said we could use it as a felt along. So I'll show you that another time. But I just want to see if this is of any interest to you at all. It's kind of an out of the box uh, kind of project um, for felting trees and you might even think of something else to felt with it but this is my little fall flame tree and i made a little gold one you could have a green one or a christmas tree or whatever so if that's of interest to you at all maybe besides the heart since we sometimes can't see those later would you say yes tree like i said it's kind of an out of the box kind of way of felting and will be really fun if you have some embellishment fibers and things like that yeah uh -huh. So Peta is watching. <laughs> Hi, Peta. Says yes. <laughs> okay, and I, you know what I'm going to do? We need. We're going to scoot this camera back just a little bit. This live camera, move it around, and get everyone in here. So yeah, and I'll just hold that up a little bit close so y'all can see it. Thank you, Anne. I'll hold it up here to the YouTube camera, and then the live camera. Yeah, and you can tell I'm not like good at drawing trees or anything, but it's super chunky and it's not um, it's not flat. So that's the thing that's kind of different about it. So if you're interested in that, cool. I'm seeing a lot of people. All right, well, we'll plan to do that in a couple of weeks. And you know what? The fairies are back to give away prizes, which they are just so good <laughs> at. So y'all come on back. Yay, fairies. <laughs> Come on, Lily. <laughs> Alrighty, who wants to go first? I'll go first. Do it. <laughs> Gotta pick a good one. <laughs> Kelsey Ortiz. Yay! Kelsey. Kelsey, you won. I had it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I, you won a needle felting a two D. So Kelsey, you win a 2D needle felting a robin kit and a oh, transfer man. pen. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> Kayla? Yeah. Oh, sure. Gotta really break them up here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sis Hewitt. Yay! Yay! Yes! <laughs> Sis, you won. <laughs> A 12 inch by 12 inch felting Ooh. foam, two felt sheets in your choice of colors, and an iron on transfer pen. That's awesome. Yay. <laughs> hold it so I can't cheat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next is Megan Robin. <laughs> Megan, you win an iron on transfer pen <laughs> and an MC1 goodie bag. <laughs> Those are fun prizes. They mm -hmm. are. <laughs> Very fitting for what we made today and picked out by the fairies, of course. <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much for joining us today. We just want to wish you an absolutely amazing rest of your week. I hope you'll take really good care of yourself. Take some time for yourself and just rejuvenate and felt mm -hmm. if you feel so inspired. <laughs> thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.